Hi everybody, I'm Kelsey from Just So, and I'm excited to give you this little introduction to our A Very Coriander Christmas Block of the Month and Sew Along. Um, we have a Facebook group called Just Sew Along, so if you're watching this video, you're either watching from Facebook or from YouTube or from our group, and so I'm going to link the link to our group um, in the description in case you haven't joined us already. Make sure you join us over there. Um, if you are in our Block of the Month, that means you'll be getting monthly kits for each block that we do. Um, this Block of the Month has started in August, and so you have already gotten your first kit by now if you're in the Block of the Month. However, if you're not, you're still welcome to join us using your own fabric. Um, fabric and this pattern book that you will um, need to purchase are available at JustSoStudio.com, which is also linked in the description. Um, in this video, I'm going to give you a little introduction to our sew along and how exactly it's going to work, as well as how to purchase your fabric for this quilt if you're not in the block of the month, and then a few recommended tools um, that'll help you as you are making this quilt. Okay, so first off, how this sew along is going to work. So hopefully by now you have joined our Facebook group called Just Sew Along. Um, so we're Just Sew. We are a quilt shop in Northern Kentucky, and we are the ones that are putting on um, this little sew along slash block of the month. If you're in the actual block of the month club, you'll be getting kits like this in a little package with a label that tells you what month it's for and what block it's for. Um, every month and so it'll come out the middle to the end of each month So the first one came out at the end of August the next one will come out at the end of September and so on And so what we're going to do is um, the first Tuesday tentatively the first Tuesday It kind of depends on it's going to be at least a week after um, the kit comes out So it might be the second Tuesday some months um, at 8 p.m. I'm going to be going live in our Facebook group to actually sew one of the blocks along with you so as an example um, let's turn to month one. This book is meant to be a block of the month, so it's laid out month one spread joy block. And so I will be, the first month I will cut this block with you. All the other months I'll probably just be sewing it with you, but all updates will be posted on the um, Facebook group. And so right here you have all the fabric requirements and cutting. And this is what you have gotten in your kit if you're in the block of the month. If you're not in the block of the month, then there is a previous page in this book right here that tells you all the fabric requirements that you need to get, which I will get to in just a minute. Um, but the way that the block of the sew along will work is you'll just um, come to the Facebook group page at 8 p.m. on the designated time, which is usually, going, like I said, going to be the first Tuesday, sometimes the second Tuesday of each month. So this first one will be September 1st, 2020. Um, and I will be going live in the group and you will just have something. I'll be talking through the whole thing as I do it. So if you need any either instruction or you just want someone to keep you company while you sew, or if you're, if you're sewing and you think you might hit a snag or you just want something to watch while you're sewing. So I think that this can be a great option for those of you who are both experienced and new to quilting. As a quick note to those who might be watching um, after our sew long has started, if you're watching this um, a few months or even just a few weeks after we have kicked off our um, A Very Coriander Christmas sew along, you are more than welcome to still join us. We might be on a different block than you. You could either catch up, um, like say we're on month six, you could either do the previous five months or you could just start on month six and catch up after we're finished. It is totally up to you. It is one block a month, which is a very manageable size load to have. So if you want to do two blocks a month to catch up or whatever works for your schedule I just want to let you know that you're more than welcome to jump in towards the middle or even towards the end if you didn't have a chance to join us at the very beginning okay so now let's get into how to purchase your fabric if you are not in our block of the month like I said if you're actually in the block of the month club you don't need to worry about this you'll be getting your um, month either ready for pickup or shipped to you every month but um, you will need this book it is called a very coriander Christmas by Cory Yoder and we're using the fabrics that are the exact same in this book, which is Hollyberry. Um, our quilt shop, Just So Studio, will be putting Hollyberry on the website as soon as we have cut all of the kits for this. So let's see, I'm making this video on August 27th. Hopefully um, in the, within the first week of September, all of the fabric will be um, available on our website to purchase. But um, if you go to our group, I've posted a couple pictures of a few examples of quilts that people have made of this quilt, but um, in different colorways. So one of them was Cori Yoder herself made this um, quilt using her apricot and ash fabric, which is peaches and grays and so that looked lovely and then there's someone else that did it in a blue and white blue and white colorway so all of the all of the prints were different types of blue and then there was just a white background so it's totally up to you let's see what this quilt looks like 
I think it could be a lovely quilt to do monochromatically, like choose blue or red or pink or whatever your favorite color is and then just have a white background fabric. Or you could do it Christmas but with other fabrics or you can wait until Halle Berry comes onto our website. Um, or you can just use a different collection of your of your choice. So um, there is, I did also post a picture in our um, Just Sew Along group of this page of the book, which tells you all the fabric requirements. So make sure you go back through our photos in that group and find this picture so that you know how much fabric you're going to need to get. So like I said, this book is available for purchase on our website, so you can go ahead and purchase that. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to recommend that, let's see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 22 different types of fabric, which includes the backing and the binding and the sashing and the background and all that kind of stuff. So 22 types of fabric are used in this quilt. Um, you can kind of condense them if you want to, but I do kind of recommend sticking to this layout as much as possible. And what I'm going to recommend that you do is make a photocopy of this paper, of this page, and then as you purchase your fabric, write on your photocopy. You could write directly on your, on your book if you want to, or you could just make a copy and write down what fabric you have bought to substitute each um, fabric if you're not gonna follow along exactly with this book. And the reason that that is going to be helpful is because say you use like um, a pink background with large florals um, to substitute this red here. What you're going to notice is that throughout the entire book, she's going to have the, the number, the name, and the little thumbnail of each fabric. And so you're gonna want to know which one am I using as substitute for this Scarlet Poinsettia. And so if you write down um, which fabric you're using as this substitute, it'll help you as you go throughout the book to know exactly which fabrics you're supposed to use for each of your blocks. And so I do recommend um, making a note for that somewhere either on your book or on your photocopy. Um, and as soon as you do that, you should be all set to go. It does use seven yards of background fabric, which we are going to be using a white on white. Um, you could use a white solid or you could use like a neutral toned grunge. You could even use a darker fabric if you want to. Say you had a bunch of lighter prints that you wanted to use and you wanted to use a dark contrast background fabric. It's totally up to you. Um, to decide how you want to do that. You could buy the backing and binding now or you could wait until later. If you're part of our block of the month, you had an option to get our backing and binding at a discount up front, and so most of you guys did do that. Um, so that's kind of the basic layout of the types of fabric that you're going to need, so make sure you go join our group and so you can see the picture of this um, part, this page of the book, so that you know how much fabric you're gonna need to buy. Okay, moving on to some helpful tools that you're going to want. So first of all, obviously you're gonna to want to have your workspace with either your phone or your computer available so you can watch the sew along. Like I said, all you have to do to watch the sew along is go to the group at 8 p.m. on the date that's announced, usually the first Tuesday of the month, and the live video should be there. Um, I'm going to be cutting along with you the first month. And so for September 1st, if you want to follow along with us there, you do not have to have your fabrics cut. Um, I'm going to do that with you at least the first time and we'll see if we continue doing it that way. Um, so I'm going to be cutting and sewing with you. Um, and a few, just a few things that you're going to want to have on hand. So obviously you're going to want a cutting mat with a ruler and a rotary cutter. I just use a 45 millimeter rotary cutter and I use a cutting mat that is 24 by 18 inches. That's just what happens to fit on my table here. Um, all of the things that I'm going to mention today are available for purchase at Just Sew on our website, justsewstudio.com. We are doing shopping by appointment right now, so if you're a local to the Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky area, then feel free to give us a call at 859-441-0175 to come pick out all of your materials for this project. Um, okay, let's get into some rulers first. I have a couple recommended rulers. First of all, you're going to, our finished blocks are going to be 18 and a half inches. So those are pretty big squares. Um, usually blocks are between like 12 and 16. I would say it's more of a standard size. So these are a little bit larger than standard. And so you are going to want some ruler that's more than 18 and a half inches. So usually that's going to be a 22 to 24 inch ruler. So um, most of you will have that on hand because that's a handy ruler to have anyways. But in terms of our smaller rulers that we're going to use for actually cutting our pieces out, I have three different options here. This is the one that I actually use for my cutting. It's 12 and a half by two and a half inches by Creative Grid. If you guys are familiar with Creative Grid, then you probably love them because they have this nice grip on the back side that makes it so that it never slides around in your fabric. Also, the way that they have the um, measurements numbered and colored are very easy to follow along with. All of the half measurements are in black and all of the whole measurements are in white so that you can hold the ruler whichever direction you want and you can still 
measure it accurately. Another thing that I like about this specific ruler is you can see that the grip on this side is a half inch and the grip on this side is a quarter inch, which makes it really easy to measure either a quarter inch or a half inch if you're trying to just get those quick measurements in. Um, another thing that's helpful for a quarter inch measurement is this um, six inch by one inch ruler by Moda. This is actually a paper on the other side you can rip off, so it's a transparent ruler. Um, so it's six inches long and it's one inch on this side, but these two black lines are measured in exactly a quarter of an inch. So if you need a ruler to quickly check your quarter inch seam um, or to cut out your smaller blocks, then this is a helpful ruler to have on hand. It's just $5 at Just So. Okay, and then my last suggested one is going to be something to measure, something to draw lines um, with when you're, either if you prefer to draw out your quarter inch um, seam, which I do not do, but if you prefer to do that, or something like this is very helpful if you are, if we're going to be doing our half square triangles or our stitch and flips for the corners, which I, um, this quilt will have a few of those. Um, and so this Creative Grids ruler, I believe this one is nine inches and I think we have another one that's 15 inches. Um, so it has these corners that you measure up diagonally across a square, and then it has these slots that you use to draw your line, which are perfect for stitch and flips or half square triangles or flying geese or whatever we're trying to do um, when we're stitching that diagonal across there. So this is a very helpful ruler to have on hand. So I really like to have all three of these in my make a dream bag with me. Another handy thing is just this mini gypsy gripper. And so what this is, is a suction cup for your ruler that gives you a little bit of a better hold on it. I'll show you how it works. So I have my ruler here. I just press down on it. I don't know if I can do this on my camera. And then you click the handle up and you can just hold on to your ruler um, instead of having to like hold the edge of it down, which can be kind of tricky without moving your fabric around as well, especially because this has a grip on one side and um, it won't slide around, but you also need to pick it up. You can't slide it across your fabric. And so this is ha handy for picking up your ruler. I think it's just about $7 at Just So, so it's a worthwhile investment. Okay, <clears throat> in terms of our actual pieces, you're going to want something to mark your fabric. And so a few options would be um, some sort of like iron off or water soluble pen. This is a friction pen that I like to use. It's an iron off pen. Um, sometimes I use this to mark my uh, pieces. And what I mean by that is that when she has us cut them out, they're going to be labeled. So like this three and quarter inch square is piece A. Um, and then the two and three quarter by five inch rectangle is piece B and so on. And so you're gonna want to know which piece is piece A and which piece is piece B without having to remeasure it every single time. Sometimes I just like to write on the wrong side of my fabric with a iron off pen, A, B, C, and label my fabrics that way. Some people like to write it on a piece of paper and pin it to their fabrics, but I find that that waste paper and time. And so one other option is to use something like these alphabeties. And what these are are little cardboard um, reusable letters. And so um, if you have a flat surface you're working with, you can just lay all of your pieces out and lay these on top. There's no way that they actually attach to your fabric. And so one option for that as well would be to clip it to your fabric if you don't wanna lay it flat with a wonder clip. And so just have that clipped onto your fabric and label your pieces that way. But another option that I have for you guys, this is just $7.99, a package of all the letters and numbers. Another option are these stickers. So these, um, there's quite a few sheets of stickers that come in this pack and um, in multiple different colors. And so if you want to label your pieces that way, then you could use it with stickers and that way it would actually stick to your fabric. But again, this type wouldn't be reusable, so it's totally up to you. But you will want to figure out which way that you think will work best for you to label your pieces. Okay, when it comes to actually sewing, we're gonna want our pretty normal standard sewing supplies. And so I have over here, I have my pin cushion, I have my wonder clips, I have my seam ripper. You want thread snips of some kind. I like to use these. I usually have these right next to my machine because they're easy to just grab and snip when I'm chain stitching. Um, but another option that I really like are these Karen K. Buckley scissors because they not only cut thread, but they also cut fabric really well. They're super duper sharp all the way up until that tip. Um, and they're serrated, so they grip the fabric really nicely. So those are two options that I like to have. Again, these are Karen K. Buckley scissors, and these are just Fisker's uh, thread snips, and they do close like that. Um, pin cushion, and then I like to use Orofil, which is um, a cotton thread. This is 50 weight, and this spool is 1,400 meters, and it's only $12. And so when you divide that down by the price, it's the same price per 
um, meter or yard as some of your more standard cheaper polyester threads, but it lasts me forever. So the one that I have actually on my machine right now, it's getting pretty low, but there's still quite a bit on there. And I have made five quilts on this one spool of thread and they're all like throw to twin size. So that gives you any idea of how long this thread lasts. It's definitely a worthwhile investment. Um, so it's 1400 meters for $12. Um, I'm just going to be using white. You can use whatever color you think suits your project. Um, and then one other thing that I really like to have on hand, which I talk about all the time, is my quarter inch foot. So this is a kind of a cheater's way to do a quarter inch seam, but I find it that it's definitely worthwhile. It'll save you a lot of headache if you know ahead of time that your seams are always gonna be a quarter of an inch. Now, if you're making like a half square triangle or a, doing a stitch and flip, then you are gonna wanna have a standard foot. And so I have my baby lock here has just um, the J foot which has this transparent piece, which makes it really easy for me to see that when my needle is in the center that I'm lining up the, the line that I have drawn from my half square triangle so that it lines perfectly up with the needle. So I really like having a foot with a transparent center right here and my quarter inch foot. And because these are just easy to snap on and off, I have them both at hand all the time. One other item I'm gonna suggest that you have is some type of storage for your blocks. Because we're only making one block a month and this project is gonna last us a whole year from August of 2020 to July of 2021, I do suggest that you have a way to store your blocks that you've already finished or some of your scrap fabric. Some of you might already have a scrap bin system for that, but I wanna make sure that you are storing your, your blocks somewhere that is easily accessible so you can keep adding your blocks every month, but that it's also out of the way and it's not gonna get damaged as we're creating um, your quilt. Okay, and the last thing that you're gonna make sure that you want to have on hand is an iron and an ironing mat of some type. So you could just have an ironing board set up next to your um, sewing machine, but one thing that I love, love, love is my wool mat. So this is my 13 inch wool mat and my mini iron, and this iron is super duper hot. It's very, very effective even though, even though it's so tiny. I think it's called the mini mighty travel iron and it is mighty there's a lot of heat packed in that little thing and there is a dial so you can dial up how much heat you want and then having my wool mat right next to me is really nice because when i have done a bunch of chain stitching and i just can take it over to my mat real quick and just press them all before i sew them together into the block and so that's something that i think you are for sure going to want to have on hand is an ironing surface of some kind and i do recommend that it is a wool mat with a mini iron right next to your machine so you don't have to be getting up to go to your iron in between each step all right, I hope this was super helpful for you guys to set you up for success for our block of the month and our sew along. I hope to see you guys on September 1st, Tuesday at 8 p.m. at our Facebook group, Just Sew Along. We are in my bedroom right now. This is my little sewing nook. I have an L-shaped desk. Sometimes I might be at the shop and sometimes I might be here in my room. It depends on the night. But I wanted to say I'm so happy for you guys to join us on this journey and I'm excited to be able to walk through it with you. And I'll see you on September 1st.